my friends, it's lovely to be over here. Can you hear me behind? Yeah. Ah, thank you. Usually people start walking away very quickly. So I was a little afraid that all of you will suddenly disappear and I will not realize that you can't hear me. But my I would think that my speech is not worth hearing, so you ran away. So anyway, thank you for acknowledging what it is. It's really nice to be over here and it's fun to be with students because... I want to tell you that the best part of life is what you are having here today. So when you look forward to be whatever you become in your future of your life, let me honestly warn you, and this is a severe warning, that the best part of your life is the student day, so just enjoy yourself, please. I tell you there is no compensation for <laughs> Having said that, Unfortunately, I mean, I finished my school career, college career, 40 plus years ago. So that's a hell of a long time. And there are a couple of things which I learned over, over a period of the years that have happened to me. And have actually shocked the life out of me. And so I'm going to share a few of those thinking and telling you what the expectations are when you walk out of college and how the world wants to see an engineer. Let's say I'm falling sick and I want to go to a doctor. All right, I've got a bad chest. So I go to the doctor and he says, oh, you got a common cold. But actually I've got influenza. I've got a stomach pain. And he says, you know, you must have eaten some food over there, which Belpuri Chopati par khaya hoga, kaan se khaya hoga, isliye pet dukta hai. Pop in this pill whatsoever. Let's presume that you have some difficulty in terms of, you have constipation. And you think that the doctor will give you a diagnosis. And you have three different doctors treating you. And let's presume that you have a serious disease of your lungs. And the doctor has not correctly diagnosed you and has just given you a crocin or something to take care of your problem. Or you have a stomach pain and you have not been diagnosed correctly by this doctor or he doesn't give you correct medicine or he gives you inadequate medicine because he doesn't care. He doesn't have interest in you to the extent that he should be. He should be a concerned doctor, don't you think? Don't you go to a doctor thinking that he will be a good professional and that he knows his subject extremely well and that every time he sees a patient, whether it's an ordinary cough and cold, whether it's a stomach pain whatsoever, or he has a serious disease like cancer or any other disease, what do you expect from the doctor? You expect that the doctor will be thoroughly professional and expertise. It doesn't matter whether he stood, got 50% marks in his college. It doesn't matter if he was not a great student. It doesn't matter whatever it is. But what is my expectation? that he is a professional doctor. I have gone to him. I have paid my professional fees to the doctor. And still, I don't get the professional advice correctly. So I'm not treated for a chest, serious lung disease. I'm not treated for cancer. I'm not treated for other things which are extremely serious. Or even if he has diagnosed it correctly, he neglects. He says, Dawai, tum itna le lo, ye barabar ho jayega. And he puts a diagnostic treatment after doing a few tests here and there and gives you a diagnosis and takes the thing from you. What happens at the end of the day? How would you feel about such a doctor? I feel horrible. I would really, really be horrified. Can you imagine you're going to a doctor, you want to be treated, your health is at importance and all this is important. Believe you me, my friends, after going in the outside world, 
every professional should be exactly like you would expect from a doctor. So if you graduate as an engineer, or when you graduate as an engineer, and you go out in the outside world, people should look up to you for your professional expertise. They should feel that, hey, I am talking to an engineer. That's the pride that we should take place over there. It shouldn't be such, oh, engineers in our country, they potholes. They don't make roads. They make potholes. They make a place. They make a loose plaster. They don't do plumbing. They make a whole leakage. Why? Why is it that when we look at the professionalism that we need from a doctor, would be different than what you need from an engineer. So my friends, let me share with you that when we got into the trade of real estate, and I'm a chartered accountant by qualifications, I have the same expectations from an engineer that I would have a doctor. I would also feel that when I'm going to a civil engineer or any other engineer, whether production engineer, a mechanical engineer, any engineer, electrical engineer, it doesn't matter what engineer you're talking about. He or she will give me the same professional expertise that I would expect from my doctor who would look after me. Once we agree to that thought process, my friends, we will have no problem in our lives to attend to professional expertise. Because once you are treated as a professional in any field of endeavor that you do, whether it's a chartered accountant, whether it's a doctor, whether it's an engineer, whether he's an airspace engineer, or he's a road engineer, or a building engineer, or a production engineer, he must be professional in his approach. And what does that mean? I am certain that the students from VGTI will be professional and not like those other engineers that we see outside. The I promise you I wouldn't come over here if I thought that I would be speaking to people who will be the dirt of engineers or the persons who make the worst part of things into the products of this country because I know for the fact that the future of the young people is going to be different in India and they do not look back. We will look forward to make a great country into the whole thing. So what is it that requires for the purposes of it? So over a period of time, I've been thinking, what does the professional person do? Now I'm a chartered accountant. What do I do? How do I remain updated? I qualified more than 40 years ago. I'm an old guy, I'm, nine, I'm 69 years old, so just sharing with you that my knowledge in the Institute of Chartered Accountant is pretty dated. It's pretty old. So I don't know what it was then, but I know what it was then because I studied and passed that damn examination. And I'm sure you will too. But is that enough? That 40 years ago or 45 years ago, what I learned in my colleges or in the Institute of Chartered Accountants professional exam is something which will be good for the rest of my life. And I learned over a period of years that there are several things every profession, it doesn't matter whether he's a chartered accountant, whether he's an engineer, whether he's a doctor, whether he's a space scientist, it doesn't matter what engineer or professional he is. There are certain criteria you must remember for the rest of your life. The first criteria is that knowledge has to be updated, not information. Information you can get on Google. It is knowledge updation that you need to do over a period of your whole life that you need to continue to learn. And I want to give you an example of my own father. My father was a doctor. He was an ENT specialist. And he lived till the age of 96. And I'll go backward. At the age of 82, I met him early morning one day. 82 years old, ENT surgeon. My father was still operating at that point of time. 
and we were chatting early in the morning, having a cup of tea together. And he tells me, he says, Niranjan, you know, I want to go to Germany to learn a new operation. I said, Dad, are you gone mad? You're 82 years old. Why do you want to go and learn a new operation? Now, my father was a Padma Bhushan awardee, a Dhanwantri winner. He had operated. <laughs> he had operated thousands and thousands of operations. There are two operations in the ENT field named after my father. He created those operations. But yet, at the age of 82, at the age of 82, he tells his son that I want to go to Germany to learn an operation. So I said, which doctor? So he said, Dr. Plester. I said, wasn't that doctor who came to you five years ago or seven years ago to learn your operation uh, for, for learning over there? And he says, yeah, you remember him? We met him and we went to Wellington Club for dinner together. So I said, fantastic. Why would you now want to learn from a guy who came to learn from you? He said, you can learn from anybody. It's a learning which you will always do. He has created a new operation. I'm going to go. And my father, at age 82, went and learned a new operation from Dr. Plester in Germany at age 82. Knowledge has no end. The second most important thing which I thought I must share with you, my friends, is the fact that we must learn to connect with the real world. There's an illusionary world that we live under and the real world that we do. So, when we work on the theory of whatever subjects we do, whether it's chartered accountancy, whether it is medicine, whether it is engineering, there are lots of things where we talk about the theory and the practice. This is extremely important to understand that when we don't integrate the two completely, we live in an unreal world. And that is the simple reason why I was very happy to learn just when I came in that production engineers have to do six weeks of internship. That's grossly inadequate. Every engineer must do at least, I repeat, at least six months of internship, even if it's after first year, second year, third year, it doesn't matter which year you do. Any person who comes out of an engineering college and has not done any internship whatsoever is an incomplete engineer because he doesn't have the touch and feel of the subjects you are. So I recommend very, very strongly to each and every one of you, don't leave the opportunity of doing internship. It doesn't matter which year, whether it's after the last year, if it's after the first year, second year, whatsoever. The more you are in touch with the subjects that you are doing on the actual ground thing, you will run and learn a 10x multiple. So if your knowledge in the ground and your subject is X, it gets multiplied tenfold when you actually use it. Anything that you do. I know how to exercise, okay? I know very well how to exercise. But if I don't exercise, how much do I know? Zero. Because there is no multiplier to knowing what you're exercising. The day you practice exercising, you get a multiple. And if you exercise regularly, you get a 10x multiple, and it's unending amount of multiples that you will possibly get. So please try and see whatever is your subject. It doesn't matter whatever it is. Even if it's not going to be relevant in the future of the exact thing that you are catering for, the linkage of going and working in industry with internship is going to be a hundred multiple, according to me. If I have become an entrepreneur, it was because after the first year, second year, third year of my BCom course, I worked in uh, I worked in a textile factory, I worked into a tile factory, I worked in, in a business house. I learned parta, 
in one of the Billa companies and I learnt all these things for four years. So I automatically got the himmat to take up entrepreneurship into the whole thing. So we must all try and see how we can do these linkages on the ground and this is extremely important. The next most important thing is that we need to work to perfection. I know it sounds funny, but it's like that. You want to target the moon, you have to have a certain angle of growth. If you move it by 0 0.01 degrees and go wrong, you will miss the moon. You will go into space and somewhere else, but you can't go close to the moon or catch the rocket to do. Engineering is about perfection. There is no difficulty in being perfect and there is no compensation for being imperfect. You cannot afford to be imperfect in anything that you do. Let me tell you my own story. 1989, I went and started my Pawai project. 87 I started. But in 89, I started a discussion with my engineering team, which had a person over there who was pretty senior. And I told him, I shared with him my ambition and aspiration of what I want to do in Pawai. I told him, I don't want a single building to leak. No roof should leak. No walls should leak. No bathroom should leak. And not today. It should never leak, irrespective of what happened. And of course, I was the boss of the company. So he said, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. What does it go to the house? What does it go to the house? He said, yes sir. So he went out and I could hear him laughing outside. He's crazy, my boss. What does it go to the house? I worked in that big company and that big company and that big company all my life. I joined now here as chief engineer. I know that the building is always leaking for 5 years. The terraces are also leaking. The concealed plumber needs to be clean. The concealed plumber needs to be clean for 4 years. The pipe is also leaking. Who can't do this? It is going to leak. It is going to leak and this is what has happened. And I heard that, overheard it because somebody chuglified me. So I came to know that he was thinking that way. And I believe you me, I couldn't sleep for many days because I just couldn't understand why my chief engineer who has got 25, 30 years of experience should talk, even think of talking like that. When I have an aspiration, when I want to make a building which doesn't leak, when I want to create a, a building which is perfect, why is it that the head of my engineering team does not want to collaborate to the purposes of doing it? It's because we have an attitude that we can't do it. We can't do it building with our building. We can't do quality with quality because we have Indian engineers for so many years. I was shocked because I couldn't imagine that my engineering team could even think like that. And the person who headed it the next 15 days, I was in a state of shock. The 16th day, I removed my chief engineer and appointed a younger person who would listen to me and not to the experience of his background that he came from, which was a negative thought to perfection. We got a young team of engineers from outside and I took a consultant from outside by the name of Mr. Remedius, who is my father of civil engineering, who taught me a chartered accountant, what civil engineering perfection was. So here was a guy who was elderly, he must have been 70 at that time, or whatever it is. Uh, I'm talking about 89. He's no more now. But he's my guru who taught me how to do it perfectly. Well, let me fast forward from 1989 to 2019. Okay? I have made 70 residential buildings in Pawai. Not a single roof leaks. Yeah. 
We give a guarantee for waterproofing of terraces for 10 years minimum. None of the bathrooms leak, even though they are all concealed plumbing. If there's a problem, I will repair it. If it cannot be repaired, we'll break it and redo it again. And we make perfect concrete. The National Building Code was modified on the basis of our suggestion that the National Building Code for concrete was not correct. And we improve the quality of the buildings that we do. And today in Pawai, none of the buildings leak. None of the buildings will have this problem. We make perfect quality concrete. And it is a perfect job. And it is done by Indian engineers. Even my guru was an Indian engineer. The, the engineers who carried out this work were Indian engineers. The contractors have been Indian contractors. But there was an intent that I want to make perfect buildings. I will not compromise to make a second best building. And we have made 120 buildings in Thane. And none of those buildings also leak. We see to it that that problem does not exist in order to do so. So it is not that you cannot do it. It is because your mindset is such that we are incapable of doing it. The same engineers who make pothole roads in Mumbai are the same engineers who make in Dubai. And none of the holes will have potholes whatsoever. Come and see the concrete roads in Pawai. Same engineers make Pawai roads. Not a single one has got pothole in the last 35 years, not a single pothole in a single road that we took to. So it is not about what you are thinking in terms of what it is. That chalta hai attitude of India must go. Every professional which comes out, the young people of today who come out, must commit that we will make perfect products. We will not compromise. It is unfortunately our history which has allowed us to be a chalta. 25 years ago, I was invited to the Mecca of Engineering Society, the Institute of Engineering Building at Haji Ali, and I was supposed to come and say what I expect from the engineers of today, and I went there on the first floor hall, and I climbed up the stairs with a much more better prepared speech than I have got today. I was wanting to speak and tell them what it is, and I felt very honored that I was going there. But by the time I reached upstairs, I had tears in my eyes. I felt like crying. I had the picture of Vishweshwari, the father of engineering, a big picture of Vishweshwari up there. And the steps that I climbed up had cracks in them. There were cracks on the steps of the Institute of Engineers building. I went up and I found